Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Spring Spike Pro League 2015 North American Edition Week Number Four, Game Number Two today. It's Game Number One, however, the first set from North America, guys. My God, it's Cloud Nine versus Denial. That's right. And with this, uh, there's a lot riding on this. From what we saw in the previous weeks, TSM doesn't really look that like they're going to drop another game. Mm -hmm. um, I expect that their one loss will be their one loss. Uh, which Denial kind of squeaked out, right? And now Denial's back in the hot seat where they have to go back up against uh, the world champions uh, from the world championship, and that's going to be Cloud9. A little bit of a must-win situation for the team he's seen coming up here. Cloud9, well, they've uh, they've already dropped a game so far. Um, if they lose this one, basically it becomes uh, AFK Gaming controlling their own destiny. Yeah. So for Cloud9 to continue to kind of control their path into the, uh, into the land, they got to win this one. They got to go through a, a denial team that looks like they can definitely knock some people off. Um, with that, denial looking very strong as well with the only win over TSM this season. Uh, Madman Mark, the uh, hotshot hunter, uh, and the boys here. Of course, everyone else you should know. Uh, Mace, Shadow Q, Shing, and the best, no strangers to the limelight. Yeah, best, uh, best only absent for a little bit there in that last end of last season, but uh, a long time tenured player. And yeah. Madman Mark has been uh, definitely no slouch this season either. He has been unreal. Um, you know, I you know try to read Reddit, try to read the forums. A lot of players try to attribute the whole win to him. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, Mace, Shadow Q, Best Shang, all extremely powerful players, although he was definitely kind of the breakout. Like, the amount of beast. damage this guy He's was doing was incredible. But we're going to jump into the first game here with Denial and Cloud 9. Picks and bands, powered by Curse Voice. No P's and B's? No P's and B's. I hate P's and B's. <laughs> I don't even know why I keep saying it. I actually hate it. Oh, boy. It's Denial. They're the blue team. First pick, first band. Bottom side of your screen. Top side All is going right. to be Cloud 9 in the red trunks. First Real pick. quick. Second pick. Second pick. If Sylvanas gets through picks and bands for Cloud 9, I'm actually going to get angry. Because it has been three weeks of people just letting Shadow Q get his best god over and over and over. Now, Europe's like, oh, Trix Tank plays Hercules? No, no, no. I don't want to deal with that. And for the most part, has been banned. But for some reason, everyone just keeps giving this guy Sylvanas. I, I don't know. Maybe it's that Mace of the Face is actually a 14th century monk and is, I don't know, writing the Gutenberg Bible to influence people to not ban Sylvanas. <laughs> is that what's going on here? Sylvanas is banned, as is Hunbots. So both the teams are doing their research a little bit here. As uh, Hunbots has been extremely successful for Andy and one of their go-to picks. In fact, both bands targeted Anister here. We, we don't even have to say Andy. Hunbots has just been successful. Yeah. Extremely successful. A lot of people even ask me, like, hey, why do you rate him so low in the tier list? You know, yeah. generally for me, what it, what it is is just, like, he doesn't affect picks and bans. You just want the character. But perhaps he might be even leagues better than that, right? Yeah. If he's winning this much, do we have to value him, uh, or rather, should players value him as we're valuing Bastet? Hey. Getting locked in for denial. There she is. So if you, if you saw, I was tweeting today a little bit about the information on Bastet. Statistically, uh, this is by far the most overvalued god. Yeah. Uh, 30%, right? Very high pick ban rate, 30% win rate. Uh, granted, it has been played by uh, enemy, I think, three times, four times and so far. they have far. not done so well. And they have not won yet, so um, that, that definitely influencing it. But statistically, this god not performing very well overall. Uh, comparatively um, to characters like Humbots, who has performed very, very well. But three junglers getting taken away and one jungler getting grabbed. Four out of five are going to be assassins in the first picks. Uh, but with that, Geb and Athena get through. Geb uh, doesn't really play any roles, right, besides support. Yeah. This could be Athena jungle, might go to Andy, but I am actually going to expect that uh, we're going to see Omega follow in Divios' footsteps yeah. and bring this to solo. Yeah, we saw Divios play Athena to, to great effect um, in the last TSM game. So I, I think I think maybe you're going to get that one right. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll give you that one. But Bastet Vamana, so that means Bastet jungle. Um, yeah where she has been even worse. And the soul lane is where most of her wins have actually come from so far. So we'll see if, uh, if Denial can kind of change that uh, and, and bring Bassett into the fold. And Well, they're getting um, very, very, very comfortable picks on the side of Denial. Isis, Mace of the Faces, yeah. Signature God, Vamana. Vamana and Best were synonymous throughout the entire Challenger Cup yeah. last year. I mean, that they was were his five men. first real foray into playing not exclusively mages coming from the mid lane. I can just play Hobwa guys and like, no, come on, Warriors. And Shing, Shing, we know Shing plays Bassett. Shing was actually one of the Bastet players that was playing Bastet before Bastet was good. He played Bastet at a professional level back when she still yeah. had her old passive of respawning faster, which he did use to great avail. He did. He actually used it. He, yeah, that's what I was going to get awesome. at. That passive got a bad rap. It I, wasn't that I bad. I agree. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that Not bad. Not as bad as Naja's. 
Let's be honest. I like Nasha's passive. His original passive. I like that one too. The one that healed your teammates when you died? That was, yeah, because what you got is Nasha. Kill somebody and die. I agree, but hey. <laughs> no more passives that are about dying. Rip. I know, RIP. So not, not rip. Freya, banned out here to uh, to end things. Uh, the final ban, Freya and Poseidon, respectively, for Cloud9 and Denial. She Blanc, eh? Rounds out the first part of the draft here. On her. Oh, has made it through. boy. Oh, damn it. There he is. The man with a 14% win rate. <laughs> Does he have a win rate at all in Season 2? Uh, I think the last time he was played was that day that Ataraxia played him as a hunter and Raffer played him as a support. Stop. And I don't think we've seen him <laughs> since. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this, in my opinion, is like the best god right now. He Fan is, Fancy Toes? He is one of my easy top ten picks. Yeah. He is the most undervalued god in the game currently, and I think without the use of Aegis breaking uh, CC, there's yeah. no way to stop him from just That was a popular through. opinion, right? It was like, okay, now that you can't break the CC chain with the Aegis, Thanos all of a sudden becomes more powerful. We haven't seen it translate into victories yet, but we'll see if Cloud9 can find a game wow. of denial as they oh. round out their draft with Bacchus on her. That's a quite a duo lane that they've drafted. Yeah, drafting on her uh, last overall. <laughs> their, their duo lane, in fact, last. Uh, and they get two what are uh, very high-value picks to, to other teams, I guess. That's uh, another nine. solo laner. Okay, so it's Athena in the jungle. Hades in the solo lane. Geb must be your support with Jubilanke, and that leaves Fancy Toes. As your mid laner. Okay, it's mid lane Hades. Mid. Okay, so that it's got to be mid lane Hades, right? This it has piece, to be. Um, we've seen it played once so far in the Pro League, and uh, my guess is that's going to Stealth. Let's find we, out. We, as it is, MLC Stealth on we've Hades. We've not seen Stealth do this yet, though. No, but he plays Zhang Kuei a hell of a lot. I mean, you got to think he knows what it's to a, do it's with. It's basically the same Mid lane. Thing. I mean, they're high clear, lane dominating, bruiser yeah. mages. I mean, and I can heal myself. Yay. Hey. All right. But, I mean, look at the. The damage potential here, especially in the mid game, you know, Shibalanke coupled with Geb, coupled with Hades, um, and you look across the way, Isis not a great way, right, out of the uh, out of the Hades ultimate. Uh, Vamana can get out, Shin can get out pretty easily, Bacchus on her. Uh, so a little curious to see a, a Hades getting picked into so many gods that are gonna just freely say, hey, no, 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 stop with this. Yeah. Also, Hades versus Bastet. Um he deals <laughs> really oh, easily. Yeah, he. She's like he, cats, and he's like um, silence the cats, then heal myself while killing them and yeah. laughing at you in my dark kind of grumpy way. Also, hold on. I, am I seeing things? Okay, I am seeing things. What were you seeing? Uh, I thought that there was that Thanatos's hog was on Hades, and I was very confused. Oh no, you were seeing things. I was like, how does he have that much gold? Although it's a little strange to see Thanatos going in uh, without a hand of the gods. Three man invade here from Denial. Um, really, the only people that have been confidently invading almost every game is the first hand of the gods goes off. Uh, it's going to be a win right there as Shing steals away and picks up the speed buff. Uh, let's talk quickly uh, before we get too far into the game about where why is Andy going. Bumba's is on Thanatos. Cam splitting. Yes. It's, it's just, even when Bumba's was considered bad on all gods, and Sir picked it up because he is going to be camp splitting. Uh, but Andy just went mid lane and is now rotating back over to blue buff with Hades. And Omega might not pick it up, or is he just splitting? I ha This is No, no. It, it make, okay, it makes some sense to get it onto the Hades if they want to do that, but it looks like it will be Omega at least sharing the XP. We'll see which way it goes. I'm looking at him using the heal. Yeah, he's just going to walk away now. They'll three-way split it. Yeah, they'll three-way split it, which is fine, I think. Um... It, it doesn't really hurt them all that much at this stage of the game. Andy's still getting full use of the gold, and, you know, they love to camp split. That's right. So so as we were saying, uh, yes, you don't need a Bumba's Mask to farm the jungle with Thanatos. It's true. He's mana. He doesn't need mana. No. However, the passive that Bumba's Mask gives in terms of sharing XP and gold is deemed worthy and is worth it if you uh, basically execute perfectly. Um, so over in the left lane here, Shadow Q and Madman Mark um, somehow getting pushed back by Hades and Shibalanke, which isn't really something we should be seeing. Madman Mark should have better clear. Shadow Q should have better clear. But they seem afraid. Yeah, a little bit they do. I mean, I, I, are they just respecting Shibalanke for some reason in the early game? I mean, granted, they can't necessarily clear that well with the on He can't really afford to throw out those impales. Uh, they still do have the, the improved mana cost from Season 1. So, with the rotation out from Shing, he has not given Best the blue buff yet, and they didn't get the steal on that either. So Best is starting to run out of mana here, even though he has the blue stone pendant, and Omega is just out clearing him front to back with Athena. Yeah, how is Best going to deal with this now? They're going to have to pull Bassett over to clear this for him. 
I mean, um, even with the blue getting done now, I mean, Best is going to be in a bad spot. Yeah, he'll he'll be okay. Like, he won't really have any kill potential, obviously. He'll should be able to stay, sustain fairly well. Um, this may actually factor in in terms of his, his ability to kind of use his ultimate purely for regen just because of the mana problems. Now, our Best going to, it looks like, finish up uh, some of his pots there. Only has two remaining after the one that's active right now. Uh, full health, hitting level five there. Uh, Omega just content to farm up safely. Also, Mace getting hit with a yeah. full range Andy. Death Scythe. Wow. A little bit of luck, a little bit of fate. And that's definitely always been the name of the game with Thanatos, right? If you hit those Death Scythe early and often, you're going to have a pretty good game. If you don't, you are going to lose the game. <laughs> yeah, very quickly. Uh, with that, Shane going to take the right camps, albeit not going to split them, not getting use out of that Bumba's Mask, and might hurt Mace to the face a little bit. Not really all that much, though. Uh, right side, we're going to see the best still getting pushed out here as Omega somehow as Athena just keeping him locked down. The invade just, it doesn't seem like it was a good idea. Uh, once they get maybe level 7, level 8 on the Vamana, uh, and, and Armored Umbrella or Umbrella Rang gets max and plus a couple more abilities. Um, Armored Umbrella, indeed. This looks like that's what he's going for. Yeah, they, he'll be able to clear a bit better. Um, surprised to see him not be in Umbrella Rank, just because he's going to eat a lot of uh, taunts and a lot of Shield soldiers. Walls, yeah. But, uh, well, you can see already, Vamana now has turned the corner and does have the superior clear to him. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, did hit, uh, or rather, is going to hit level 7 pretty soon. Uh, he, he's actually about even an experience looking at Shing versus Thanatos here. Um, Thanatos actually ahead, Andy, despite losing his speed buff, maintains an experience and gold lead over Shing. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Shing, Shing staying a little long in the, in the solo lane. Um, and, and Thanatos, he put some nice pressure out of the mid lane and, and was able to maybe eke a little bit more experience and gold out of that than normally he would have given how much pressure they're able to put on that makes the I face. just love the start that came out from, from C9 here. They start back camps knowing Denial is going to invade. They give up the speed buff. They contest the blue to make sure that they can't take it. Then go to mid push and then three mad their own blue to make sure there's no counter push because of the double hand. It's just absolutely brilliant. And this is one of the reasons that we saw the original Dignitas roster, now Eager, uh, lose uh, to what was then Cog Red, now it's TSM. It's because they changed their jungle starts from game to game, making sure that they understood what could be taken, what couldn't be taken, and how to do it efficiently without losing too much in the beginning. It seems to be about as close as you're going to see to a 4 protect 1 strategy in, in competitive smite. Um, not really any kind of meta-based strategy, it's, it's generally not how the game is played, but this is very much a uh, let's just get Barracuda to 40 minutes style of game. And on Shibalanke, that's definitely not a bad idea. Uh, the hardest carrying hunter in the game, uh, kind of tied in my opinion with Freya, uh, who's not really considered a hunter so much as she is a mage, or sometimes even assassin, she wears many hats. Yeah, she, she definitely, she's a, she's a hat wearer. She likes hats. <laughs> uh, wave to wave right now, a small advantage, speaking of the dual lane to Barracuda, as he does have 10 stacks on the Dev's gloves and about 150 gold extra to his name, comparatively to the zero stacks on Madman Mark. Uh, and again, on her at this stage of the game, super, super powerful. Shirolanke at this stage of the game, not very good. So, Brandon, why is North America so much better than Europe? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, of course, but, but basically th for the first five minutes, again, we're not seeing a first not come out. Not this week, um, because there's no kills yet. Yeah, Europe hey, got kills this week. That, that's kind of what I'm getting at, you know. Um, it really, honestly, there's, what are you seeing different between the first six minutes here, as we don't see a first one coming out early in this one either. Oh, wait, let's hold that for a second. Andy going to take to the sky. Shing, very patient there, recognized that even with cats, wasn't going to find anything there. And with that, Andy will retreat back to the red buff. But given the fact that he is a Thanatos who heals uh, along with a... Oh, nice Gab Shield as well to keep him up. Oh, my... Lord, he was just dead. <laughs> How? He, he just, uh, you know, bump his mask. Stealth all, all is in a lot of oh, trouble here. here. MLC Stealth forced the death from below out of that one, but the Shibalanka ultimate not resulting in a kill so far in North America. Still nothing cooking through six and a half minutes, but again, uh, early game start differences. Anything that you're seeing here as to why maybe we're seeing such a relaxed pace out of these two North American teams? I think the looming threat of possibly losing chances at LAN by not winning this set is keeping both teams kind of very safe. Uh, best getting a free wave of experience as Omega dashes over, but realistically, I'm looking at three players on that. We're going to look at Stealth, we're going to look at Andy, and then we're actually going to be four, because we're going to look at the duo lane coming out from Denial, all being very, very defensive on characters that should at this game, or at this stage of the game, be very aggressive, uh, but all oh. of them seem very afraid to fight. So, moving forward very aggressively, there was Andy, puts out a, quite a bit of damage onto the Isis, and 
Well, as you can see, though, he does not have much HP to speak of. Uh, that that cat scratch coming out of Bastet there, even with the Geb Shield, still cutting through about half of his HP. Well, and he, you know, no defense to be found here, sitting basically only on full boots, but he does have about 1,300 gold in hand, and he's been splitting these camps unbelievably well. The one big thing about Thanatos here versus Bastet is that he is never going to be mana hungry, which means he can sell that Bumba's Mask so much earlier after reaping the benefits of it, and then gain that just huge spike. Reaping? Let's see what you did there. I was, I'm, I'm funny sometimes. You are funny sometimes. I have a podcast. Do you? No. I know. Uh, who would listen to that? I don't know. I think some people get like 10. The wine hour? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it depends on the, the type of juice, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Izzy, Izzy's in wine? Uh, I have a lot of Izzy's. In I life. know. I heard. Like hundreds. I thought you were off the Izzy's, Brandon. Yeah. Well, listen. Lead me not into temptation. And Amazon's like, yo, sale. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Well, back to the game and not my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gold Fury. Now, we've seen this once before. We've seen a Gold Fury get taken before the first blood. Uh, Denial kind of flirting <laughs> with the idea now for the second time. Uh, pulling it up there. Um, it looks like they just, Nothing they lost just wanna, there. They want to fight. They, they, nothing really lost. They're trying to bait it out there. Shadow Q looks like he's going to be able to clean up some wards. Uh, could be in some trouble there. Andy, beautiful spacing. Hits the Soul Reap without hitting the Gold Fury there. Very impressive. Yeah, but so again, I go back to this idea. It looks like Denial wants to fight, and they want to force fights, especially on the left side of the map, where they should have the better kill potential with the Bacchus on her, but they really haven't The been issue is that we're not factoring muscles. in the fact that Athena will be over there in a heartbeat. Yeah, Athena's there instantly, and you got a Thanatos that can rotate over. With, so a lot of, lot of global uh, or semi-global presence coming out this? inside of Cloud9. What is this three-man... <laughs> Like all, all random, all mid. It looks like all random, all, all mid with Gab Hades, Thanatos in the mid lane. Yeah, poor guy that's played the Thanatos in the A ram there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hit your death sights, buddy. That's all I can tell you. Live and die. Well, maybe we'll see a little bit of action breaking out. Left side mid camp going to be a little delayed here. Right side as well. Going to come up around that 30 second mark. Nine and a half minutes. Seems to be the all deal. Five. Left side, yes. Left and right side. Looks like it goes to Denial Esports. So they. Uh, They'll find themselves a little bit of a bounty here on the third spawn of those mid camps. All five people on the rotation, and realistically, nothing was lost there. Denial with a beautiful call uh, to make sure they get a major boost in experience. Um, but still, uh, Jeff Hemmel, level eight right now, uh, somewhat steadily behind uh, Shadow Q. As you can see, the goal difference is about even, but the experience just just enough uh, to make Shadow Q a bit more threatening with that level two intoxicate. So when does the fight happen? There's no fighting in this game. Oh, okay. I guess the fight happens when they think that Thanatos isn't going to kill them in two hits. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like, yeah, Denial, they want to take a fight on the left side of the map at the Gold Fury only, right? They keep on kind of going there and leashing it. Um, they're not playing aggressively in their lane. They don't want to get blown up by the Athena Thanatos rotation. They're just going to try to wait out the Thanatos, maybe? I mean, it is three Guardians and a Thanatos. Not a lot of late game out of this Cloud9 team, so I guess it's to the benefit of Denial to stall them out. Oh my god, they do have more. three Guardians. I didn't even consider that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's... A decent amount of scaling, um, but it's, it definitely doesn't take them to the late game. They won't have a lot of in-hand damage. It's just going to be whack-a-mole. Like, how many people can you CC to try to get to Shiba Lanke, right? Right, just exactly. Keep whacking him with the hammer. It's, it really is a four-protect one, especially how they're playing it. They're not trying to get Thanatos involved early and often for kills. It's Anis or control the pace of the game a little bit here. Don't even just, just try to kind of force them into a box and let Shiba Lanke free farm. See, I think Thanatos' endgame is unbelievably strong when he's attached to an Aphrodite. But there's no Aphrodite here. He has, like, a Geb shield, right? And will you use it? Mace getting very low. Circle of Protection going to be used as well as Cats. Uh, and it looks like Stealth going to be in there. A lot of trouble. First Blood uh, could be going oh! down. And it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade so far. Mm, Andy getting very Thanatos. low as well. No, Thanatos is going to survive barely there as some minions go down, giving him a little bit of extra HP. Win for C9. He will survive the Cat Scratch. And, yeah, it's, it's a trade of MLC Stealth the mid laner for Shadow Q on the Bacchus. Uh, but First Blood. Right, with the credit of First Blood, even with the positional advantage, uh, it, may, it may be a little bit of a wash there. Wow, I have not noticed the experience difference here is, like, absurdly in favor right now of seen, or rather uh, Denial. Although it has been normalized a little bit, their lead is starting to get taken away. But realistically, why is Cloud9 on the defensive here with the Thanatos? Things could change, though, as the first uh, real Gold Fury... Nope, nope, this one's going to be a wash, too. Okay. <laughs> All right. They started up, but they, they think better of it. Uh, like, no, meantime, FF Isis, my only weakness. <laughs> not sure if we called it uh, that uh, Madman Mark got soloed there by the CUDA. 
Yeah, that's not something that we should be seeing uh, on her versus Shibalanke, especially at even level, uh, albeit is not even anymore. Uh, Shibalanke with a huge advantage, not only in gold now, but uh, getting that extra stack on the passive is going to make him much more dangerous. And as both come to lane, there's going to be a 5 damage difference between the two characters, plus a 15% attack speed boost for Shibalanke as well. Early shield of the underworld out of the Athena here. Wow, yes, very, very early. Well, Although I, I adore the build. There's just not that, like, maybe maybe the Isis ultimate, but there's not really that, like, big, bursty early game ultimate that you can reflect a lot of for how early the Shield of the Underworld is picked up. Oh, Omega uh, getting kind of manhandled here. Is just trying to trade back for as long as possible. Not going to get hit by the Umbrella Rang and notices that he did not do very much damage to that baby yeah. with the Stone of Gaia. Yeah, yeah both, of, both of the soul liners, soul liners, I'm sorry, getting their uh, their defensive items up. It's physical protection for the Athena, magical on the side of the Vamana, but uh, Vamana's selection comes with uh, quite a bit more regen than what Omega's going to get. Omega, though, does uh, get the added bonus, uh, bonus of 25% cooldown reduction. Um, now, Magi Boots versus cooldown boots here. Again, the discussion takes a weird topic because normally I'm very in favor of Magi Boots, and in this case I don't know that I'd waver, but the argument can be made that on a Guardian it might be a little bit better to have that extra CC or extra rotation. Uh, but 25% CDR, I mean, it's already a pretty big chunk. Yeah, the, um, the double power boots coming out of the Guardians in Athena and Hades in this game. Um, kind of gives you some insight into exactly how uh, Guardians work. Very very high base damage generally, and uh, usually pretty aggressive scaling on their ultimates especially. When you're running mid-game, you need those ultimates to be uh, super effective. Thanatos barely makes it out of that one alive, and this should set up. I mean, just look at the that map. Cloud9, Cloud I'm sorry, very out of position to really contest this one. It's all up to Jeff Henley. Here comes the Athena as well. When are you going to go on old Jeff? There it is. Cataclysm misses everybody, but Athena's here now. Sphere Ball on the mark for two. There's a belly flop on top of it. Umbrella Rain coming through. Best with a lot of damage to come out. Denial gets that gold fury, but it's oh, a huge no. pillar of agony. And down falls Denial Esports. Barracuda finds Madman Mark and a second kill oh, on to Mace. It's just the best. They're just feeding Barracuda. Shibalanke cannot get these kills. Oh, there was so much hand holding going on. That would have been an immediate oh, wipe on Cool. Knock Rose up. Layer. Whack. Oh, Omega. Jeez. That was a 14-minute so deicide. They're going to lose their left side jungle. They're going to lose the Gold Fury. They're going to lose possibly a Tier 1 tower. Uh, that was... the the. I think the easiest word to use there was dramatic. I'd say the easiest word there is Rick Ross. They oh, wait. I'm sorry. The, the Gold Fury was uh, taken. Excuse me. It was. Denial, denial got it. Yeah, Denial. Yeah, Denial sorry. picks up the Gold Fury in that one. But yeah. even so, Cloud9 uh, somehow 4,000 experience in the lead now out of nowhere. And Andy That's wasn't kills. A, Andy, Andy wasn't a part of that. So this is this is Smite in a nutshell, boys. Um, you see the graphs. Kills in the mid game is massive, massive, massive swings. This is a 6,000 experience swing off the back of that DS side at minute 50. Yeah. Gold is about 3,000. Um, so you can just see just how much these early game experience differences can matter and how much experience really is the lead indicator for how much how far ahead a team is not gold as it's very hard to make up the gold discrepancy in the fights this experience it ends up getting away from you now looking at the builds here Omega opting into the golden sash now this builds into one of three things uh, gem of isolation giving him slows uh, on reach on preemptive strike defender of Olympus and shield wall uh, not on the taunt uh, we're going to see possibly a Warlock Sash, albeit he's That's not going to see that thing stacked up until a million minutes, meaning it's probably unlikely. And then finally, Ethereal Staff. Now, Ethereal Staff generally works very well when you have added health, so a oh, little bit confusing oh. there. Oh, Shield wow. of the Underworld is there. It's going to stop them for a bit, dashing away with the Shield Black Hole as well. Thanatos on top of it. The double CC chain is there, and Shing is dead best. He's forced out of the fight with this one as he uses ultimate Spear Ball. Well, it's from downtown, and it's on the mark. MLC Stealth, he wants to dive this one. Omega calling for it, but... The captain going to shoo them off of that one. Trying to circle around now as Omega check the backside of this fight where they're going to take this camp and they're going to have MLC Stealth run interference here, <laughs> healing himself back up. Hades, he's on the scene. Too much hand-holding. Denial consistently putting themselves on top of each other, not forcing the option. Every single time they have lost an engagement so far, it's because more than one person is getting hit by an ability they shouldn't be. And with that, right back to the back line, circle or protection or no, MLC Stealth getting the ult off. Does he have enough to sustain? Not quite, but they're still going to pick up at least one. And the tower, there's the second Andy with the double. Let's play, where is Barracuda? Oh, look, he just took all the towers in the mid lane and is pressuring the Phoenix. <laughs> Didn't even see it, Bart.
Oh, Shadow Q getting tagged once again. Going to be forced to belly flop. Andy not giving up just yet. Just kidding. He's going back to He the, was giving yeah. up. <laughs> he gave up entirely. Yeah, he, he could have killed that Bacchus maybe, but they're going to fall back. Uh, he would have died for it. They're losing their tier two on the left side here to the on her. So kind of maybe forced to stay and fight in many ways are Cloud9. I don't think they make it back in time to stop Madman Mark. But they trade the left side for the mid lane and a tier two on the right. It ends up being a good trade for them, but maybe they gave up more than they needed to. They get the tier two, fine. But, I mean, realistically, I don't see that being worth it at all. The split push, if On Her was there, things might have been different in that team fight, right? On Her from the back line could have put a pillar down to slow the advances. Could have been there to kill Hades a little bit faster before, you know, Mace took most of his health. In that, Madman Mark probably should have rotated, but moreover, there's no reason they should have engaged there without him. Yeah, it's a 1,500 gold lead for Barracuda, though, over Madman Mark. Oh, ma. Three levels and, you know, the better late-game presence. On her has to get it going, like, now, basically. Uh, I don't, or, or I don't think it happening. exists anymore. I think at this stage of the game, Shibalanke is just going to have way, way too much pressure. It's not about On Her versus Shibalanke anymore. It comes down to, I'm Shibalanke, the super late game carry, and you're On Her, and you better hope every single one of your teammates hits every form of CC or you are useless. Yeah, also, my passive is stacked. Three it, times. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting it up there. He's getting enough damage to the point where it's not going to help the three-level advantage, that's for sure. No. No, he's start, starting to get that bad boy up. Uh, Shibalanke builds power as his passive for every kill that he gets credit for. Uh, FYI, for those of you out there that didn't know. Adding 15. So he's at fifth bonus but 15, 5 per, and, and that's really why uh, this god really shines, especially in the late game, is assuming he can get a few kills. Uh, gets a little, ends up just hitting harder than everyone Do else. Do you see this? Uh, like they're I see, they're I see aggressing in the mid lane again, trying to kill uh, basically one of the tankiest characters in the game, and all the while they're losing their entire jungle for it. Yeah, and, and then there's old Geb with the Wii U's coming through, letting them know that you ain't killing anybody these days. <laughs> and he's built into a uh, relatively early Magi's Blessing uh, in that, I guess, in that third item slot right after the Jotuns. That makes a lot of sense in this game. Again, it is. Yeah. It is. Big fan. A very, a very unconventional strategy here in in Smite. Uh, obviously, a, a fairly conventional strategy in the mobile world as a whole. It's uh, it's four protect one. It gets you belong into the late game and Cloud Nine. Really, really executing here. Something that is very unorthodox for this this scene. Free Gold Fury, absolutely untaxed, uncollected, beautiful call coming out there from C9. No way to answer back. Denial getting decimated here in the mid game. Yep. And best. Oh, that was a big miss. Andy. I think he, if he second gets himself, he was worried about that the percentage reach and getting it back up. Desert Fury through the wall. It suffices to get rid of a stone shield, but it doesn't stop Barracuda oh, from uh, using his his branching bolas. Maze, MLC Stealth, he finds the kill with Devour Souls, Denial's Shadow Q. Has an opportunity on the Barracuda there for a moment, oh but my God. as that Geb Shield comes out, Art. and the silence. Did you see how good MLC Stealth is at this game? Every other Haiti player, including, in, in my opinion, including Divios, anyone who plays that character would have stopped that ult the second that they didn't hit it. But he keeps it up, and if he if he didn't keep it up, Shing would have walked into that fight, hit some kind of razor whip, and someone would have died. I don't remember who it was, but someone Barra. was extreme. Barry, yeah, very very low health. Probably would have went down. But Stealth's like, you can't walk past this area. You're dead. <laughs> and then just they get Barracuda into a spot where he's going to get another assist. In fact, gaining three in that fight. Now they're going to turn their sights to Fire Giant. Shadow Q nowhere near able to stop this one. Brandon, what is Fire Giant in Spanish? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, wait, wait. Fuego Gigante? Elijante de Fuego! Oh, I was close. I was close. I was yeah, close. You were close. Actually, I was probably wrong. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> whatever he, you call him in whatever language you, you name him, Cloud9 G2A has taken the Fire Giant. Not only do they have the Fire Giant and uh, a pretty substantial Gold Fury and exper or rather Golden Experience lead, but they're up by 11 kills. Uh, the only two kills to this point, one onto Isis, one onto Vamana, uh, neither of which are going to have anywhere near enough damage. The issue, on her can't carry the game. Best doesn't have enough damage to carry the game. Isis has been picked off at the beginning of almost every single fight since the beginning of this game. Bastet cannot carry the game. Bacchus cannot carry the game. <laughs> They're going up against four people protecting Shibalanke. It's Vamana with a defensive build that's that's kind of it's it's this is the best show now for Denial Esports. Yeah, now Shing, Shing and Madman Mark, they gotta somehow get some momentum going here, make the room, let Best get the items and see if he can wipe the team for him. But Best now going into Steel Mail, would it I I, they, I have to assume that this is gonna be either Megardian or Nimi, right? I yeah, mean Megardian. Mid Guardian's gonna do the best to save the damage, 
Nemean's gonna do the, the best chance of killing Barracuda. Neither is really worth more than the other at this stage of the game. And uh, no one is ready to deal with this Phoenix push. Eesh. Yeah, it's it's tough. This is a this is a tough situation they find themselves in. It's like Oh you, my lord. I mean the fight's just out of control here. You can see Hades from LC Stealth. He <laughs> really has just such a great game presence for how to move forward with these guardians in the fights coming out of that Jean Queen playstyle. The back line, Thanatos did find a kill. Shing's gonna get taunted out of the well. But can they kill him before he goes down? It doesn't look like it's it's basically uh, Cloud9 just whenever they decide to finally go in. They're going to be able to uh, to win this one. It looks like I mean, there's one Phoenix standing and so much team fight on their side. And what I was kind of getting at is, what do you do if you're denial here? Do you itemize against the magical burst you have to deal with the next 10 minutes? Or do you try to itemize against the Shibalanke late game? Uh, Vomana tried the latter, and well, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't worked out so great for them. They just have no answer. They can't even get to Barracuda. Final Phoenix looks like is going to go down here. Shadow Q trying to block the shots, but I don't think he realizes how little health he has at this stage of the game. It will be picked off cleanly with that. All forms of defense aside from players are removed as just the Titan stands to try to keep this one alive. And uh, this one looking more and more likely to be a Cloud9 victory. Barracuda to find themselves another kill. Let's pad those stats. Omega at 3-0 at 13 in this game as well. Did Stealth just walk in the fountain? Yeah. It's MLC Stealth. <laughs> and for the first time in a long time, Brandon, Thanatos wins the game. I love Thanatos in Season 2. And, uh, Andy didn't really play Thanatos that game. He nope. played Hunbots. He just played, yeah, he played generic jungler. You're he, right. I mean, it was like, by Magi's Blessing and old people sometimes, mostly just silence as follow-up. Yeah. I mean, we saw, I think, one execute the whole game. Death Scythe weren't really changing the way things were. In fact, the major team fight that swung the game, Andy wasn't even in it. He had overhand smash that happened to silence. That's basically, <laughs> that's basically what he was playing that game. Um, but still, uh, Cloud9 manages to take a game. We're going to see the way that things were shaping up here in the beginning as we take a look at First Blood. And uh, this one uh, happened a little bit late in the game, as you can see, about 11 minutes for this one here. And it was initiation by Jeff Hill, as it so often is, that sets up the knock-up chain. And the Ice Ultimate uh, is enough for them to actually secure this kill ultimately here in the mid lane onto he, he Shadow Q. Him to MLC death. Stealth falls down just after that. This is an auto attack. I know. That was big hands. I am a big proponent of getting support the first blood. They need gold in Season 2 more than anyone with, with the reduction of Midas Boots and the fact that Watchers isn't giving you as much on rotations anymore. Sure. Having supports get that huge spike of like four, four to 500 gold is invaluable. Not to mention the uh, a two level advantage on your support is really difficult to overcome for the enemy team. They, yeah. You're just so behind in base damage uh, and base HP. But uh, let's take a look at how this one shook out in terms of jungle control. It's going to be a different story than what we saw last game uh, out of Europe, where even though there was a victory, it felt, felt pretty one-sided in terms of control. You can yeah. see just how much Cloud9 dominated this map. 63% of the mid camps their way, 70% of the mana camps, 67% of the red buff power camps as well. So they, uh, they really Jeez. definitely dominated, especially those back harpies of Denial Esports. One of the two Gold Furies, uh, they, you know, the first one didn't really go their way. Still winning the fight, though. That would, that's, to me, the whole game, right? Is they stuck on the Gold Fury for so long it, that they didn't really give themselves an opportunity to fight. Denial didn't get an opportunity to fight the enemy team. Mm. Once they chased Andy away, they were like, we're going to win this fight for free. And then uh, player of the game here, Barracuda, comes in, two kills, turning himself into an absolute monster, carries the game at 4-0-11. Yeah, I mean, there was two options for player of the game in this game. It was Barracuda or the other four members of Cloud9. Right? They, <laughs> they kind of played as one squad, and then there was the Barracuda squad. And the Barracuda squad did pretty well. 4-0 uh, and 11, they, they make the reform. And this, this fight, yeah, I agree. This was definitely a big turning point where they, they just funnel the kills to him. Now, ultimately, Omega steals that kill on the best because it's Omega, but uh, <laughs> they could have even put another one on the back of Shibalanke had they elected to. Oh, my God, he can't miss. Yeah, the, the kid is the kid is pretty Just, damn good at this game. Well, uh, going into game two, I think the big predictions here are going to be: I don't see Sylvanas coming back. You got to know that Cloud Nine loved the way that one went, and if they do change that, uh, Denial will have a much better chance of winning. Uh, and number two, it has to be: we need to be more aggressive and stop Barracuda from being Barracuda. Tell us who you think will win by tweeting at Smite Pro, guys. Cloud Nine GTA or Denial Sports for a chance to win awesome prizes. And uh, from us here, I mean, uh, kind of looking forward to game number two. To me, it's. It's, a, it's an interesting question, right? They got pocket strated in game one. I mean, you can tell Cloud9 knows that they need to win this game. Do they have what it takes to seal out Denial into or Denial fight back? Guys, don't go anywhere. Five minutes from now, we'll be back with game number two out of a best of three set. Denial versus Cloud9 G2A.